I just graduated Harvard University in 2008, and I've been working here since an undergrad in my junior year. Hi, my name's Gemma Atro. Um, I just finished studying for a PhD in solar physics at University College London. So we've been studying some explosions from the sun um, using some Hunrode XRT data. And the two main types of eruption that come from the sun, um, these are called flares and coronal mass ejections. So flares is ba are basically a huge release of energy right across the whole electromagnetic spectrum. Coronal mass ejections, on the other hand, are huge eruptions of plasma and magnetic field into the interplanetary space. These huge explosions from the sun are quite difficult to view. Um, this is because the surface light from the sun is very, very bright. So in order to see these huge eruptions that happen in the sun's atmosphere, you actually have to block out the surface light from the sun. And we see this in nature during a solar eclipse when the moon does this job, it blocks the surface light and you can see the faint atmosphere of the sun. Um, but we actually have instruments up in space that do this on a routine basis. So these artificial eclipses are called coronagraphs and they essentially have a disk that blocks out the solar surface light and allows us to see the faint atmosphere. At the same, when these eruptions happen, they also disturb the very low atmosphere of the sun and they make a signature in the low atmosphere, which we've called a coronal wave. Now, these things were discovered um, using data from the SOHO Observatory. Um, they were discovered in 1996. So this is a relatively recent um, discovery in solar physics. And since that time, there's been an awful lot of study of these things um, and a lot of debate as to what they actually are. So coronal waves are a bit of a mystery. And we know that every time you see a coronal wave, there's a coronal mass ejection. But the actual physical relationship between the two features is not really well understood. Um, when I moved to this group, um, I gave a welcome lunchtime talk. And this was just basically describing my research to date on coronal waves and CMEs. And we primarily study coronal waves using extreme ultraviolet light. But we should also be able to see them using x-rays as well, although there's not a lot of data in x-rays. So Alec was listening to this talk, and after I'd finished, he came up to me and had a surprise at meeting. Right. So Gemma actually gave the talk in this very room. And I remember listening to it, and I was like, ah, cool. We should be able to see it in Hinode XRT. Neat. And I've been looking at coronal mass ejections, trying to find them in XRT data. And usually when XRT points, it points at a very small region of the sun. So we weren't, it's hard to tell. Like we, we have a couple of examples of coronal mass ejections in small areas, but no big areas. So I thought of the best example I could that I've seen it in a small area. And then I went and looked for larger images during that time. And what I found was was exactly like a corona wave. Uh, it wasn't the best data, but it was there. And right after that, it wasn't an hour after Gemma gave her talk that I came up to go grab her and said, hey, I think we may have a wave in the x-rays. So that was very exciting. And it kicked off the first part of this project. Um, so I guess we started it about a year ago yeah, today. <laughs> first event where I studied uh, coronal mass ejection in XRT was actually this event right here. And you can see it's kind of a small field of view. You can see the limb of the sun right here. So it's definitely not the whole sun. So after Gemma's talk, I kind of just went back and looked at data that had a larger field of view. And that's where this data came from, this kind of difference movie. And you can see where the active region up here is down here, so it's much smaller. So it's about here is, is about the field of view from this guy up here. So that's what you're looking at here. And it just really, you can't, you can't see the coronal wave, what we're looking for, what we're interested in this field of view. So that's why it's important to have larger field of views and uh, a good take lots of images within a certain amount of time so you can resolve the wave going through. Using the XRT data combined with the stereo extreme ultraviolet data, what we actually understand is that the coronal mass ejection moves predominantly to the south 
as the corona wave moves from predominantly to the south, due to the driving of this filament eruption that starts the whole eruption. And this filament material, this material that initially gets shot out of the active region towards the south, this actually goes to become the core, the very internal part of the coronal mass ejection. So we now understand why the corona wave and the CME move predominantly southward. It's due to the driving of this film interruption. And if we look using some very delicate processing techniques in the extreme ultraviolet data, we can actually see what's happening below the coronagraph occulting disk. So here we have a plot. This is base difference data of the extreme ultraviolet. This is the limb of the sun. This white circle here indicates the coronagraph occulting disk. And what we can actually see here is the coronal mass ejection. And then in the extreme ultraviolet data, we have the coronal wave. And in the region below the occulting disk, we actually see that the coronal mass ejection is actually linked to the coronal wave. It actually maps back to it, like the coronal wave is the footprint of this coronal mass ejection. And this is an unusual result, and it's very surprising to many solar physicists because the apparently nicely half-spherical, well-behaved coronal mass ejection actually has a very strange distortion. This is very asymmetric. But now we understand why we have this expansion to the south, and it's due to this filament that starts off the eruption, initially in the life of this eruption, causing a very strong movement toward the south. So basically, this work gives us a really strong insight into the actual link between coronal mass ejections and coronal waves. Before, we understood that somehow they're related, but the actual nature of the link wasn't very clear. So using the Hinode XRT data, combined with the stereo extreme ultraviolet data, it's actually given us a really strong insight into how the coronal wave and coronal mass ejection are actually related.